You know what I mean. <laughs> Goofing off. We're back to we goof are. off. We're back to goof off once and again. And I've got another story for you. I said something very negative at the beginning of this, and I just want to say it's not <laughs> what I meant. But let's keep going. I don't think I picked it up. Oh no! I was like, oh, it's fun to it's fun to make it's fun to make drug references on your stupid show. Oh no! And no I was no. like, I didn't get that. I didn't pick that up. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. No, I mean, I mean, uh, I was talking to you about you, uh, uh, and and I thought I don't want you to take that the wrong way. I didn't. Okay. You were worried that I picked it up on the recording, though. I was actually, but I didn't. That is good. And I didn't take offense to it. Yeah, <laughs> we're on the right track. So. What do you got for me? I know it's another baseball story. It is another baseball story. Um, credit for this goes to another podcast called The Dollop, because I was just searching for random baseball facts. Yeah. And I came across this podcast where they talked about this. So a lot of credit goes to The Dollop for giving me the idea to do an episode on this guy. So what the we're going to do is wait for this truck to pass. <laughs> he was like Argh. so here we go yeah what's up george edward waddell was born on october 13th 1876 just outside of bradford pennsylvania and he grew up in the pennsylvania countryside he was described as quote a different sort of child already off to a good start retarded at the age of three <laughs> He wandered over to a local fire station by himself and ended up staying there for several days. Re <laughs> which led to a lifelong fascination with fire trucks. <laughs> he did not attend school often, but he did know how to read and write. <laughs> it is unknown when he got the nickname Rube, but it but the name stuck for the rest of his life. R U B E Rube Waddell. Yep. What's that even mean? Uh, back then, it meant stupid person. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. And so they called him Rube Waddell. What up, stupid? But he was also described as very strong for his age. Oh, really? Which was due to him working in the coal mines around his home and drilling sites at a very early age. He also said that some of his strength... It came from throwing rocks at birds he encountered on his family's land when he was bored. I totally get it. You hit the bird with the rock, you capture the soul. Strength. After a while, he was able to aim at birds that were flying and hit them. Well, that's what happens when you practice. It is not well documented who or what urged Rube to start playing baseball, but he started playing in local leagues in the 1890s. He was a pitcher, and after years of throwing rocks at birds, his aim and his throwing speed were his biggest assets. <laughs> his first professional baseball, uh, first professional baseball contract was for five hundred dollars, which is roughly fifteen thousand six hundred dollars today. <laughs> uh, playing for a Louisville team at the end of the eighteen ninety seven season. When the eighteen ninety seven season ended. He was loaned to the Detroit Tigers to gain professional experience. After, def after defaulting on his rent and being fined by George Vanderbeck, the owner of the Tigers, Rube left Detroit to play in Canada before eventually returning to Homestead, Pennsylvania to pitch in a semi-pro baseball league. He rejoined the Louisville team in the final month of the 1899 season and helped them win seven of nine divisions. So he was pretty good. He was. Uh, when the National League contracted eight teams for the 1900 season, Louisville bought a baseball franchise from Pittsburgh, and the Louisville team was terminated. The top players from the Louisville team, which included Rube and Honus Wagner, were transferred to the Pittsburgh team. Rube was notably unpredictable and would often leave in the middle of games to go fishing. What the fuck? His <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it gets better. To go fishing. His fascination with fire trucks was also an issue, because if a fire truck passed by the field he was playing on, he would chase after it, help the firemen put out the fire, and no. then, then return back to the game. Sorry, there was a fire. I had to... 
What he would f- he would disappear for months at a time during the baseball off season, and it was unknown where he would go until one of his until he told one of his teammates <clears throat> that he would make extra money in the off season traveling with the circus wrestling alligators. No. <laughs> He was also easily distracted, and fans from the opposing teams would hold up shiny objects, which seemed to put him in a trance, or they would hold up puppies or kittens, which would cause Rube to run over to them and pet the animals. (laughs) Rube also had a bad drinking problem, (laughs) and it was reported at the time that he had spent his entire first year signing bonus on alcohol. (laughs) Damn, dude, you drink a lot. Rube made his debut with the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1900, and he led the National League in earned run average. However, his erratic behavior led manager Fred Clark to suspend him. After seeing Rube pitch in the semi-pro league in Puxatawney, Milwaukee, Brewers manager Connie Mack convinced Rube to pitch for the Brewers in the summer of 1900. Hmm. On August 19th, Rube pitched the first game of a doubleheader for the Brewers, winning the game in the 17th inning. Mac offered Rube a three-day vacation if he agreed to pitch in the second game as well. Rube threw a complete game and won with the opposing team scoring zero runs. And mm. After the game, Rube went to Pilwaukee Lake and fished for the three-day vacation. <laughs> nice. He just fished three days. Rube wore out his welcome in Pittsburgh quickly, though. Aww. And in 1901, his contract was sold to the Chicago Cubs. The manager of the Cubs, Tom Loftus was not as accepting to Rube's behavior as his previous managers had been. And Loftus eventually suspended Rube from the Cubs. (laughs) He's like, you know what, get the fuck out of here, you drunk. (laughs) Firefighting. Alligator wrestling. (laughs) (laughs) Connie Mack, who had now relocated to Pennsylvania, was in desperate need of a pitcher. Mack heard that Rube was pitching in California on a minor league team and was available after being suspended from the Cubs. Mac sent two Pinkerton detective agents to sneak Rube back to Philadelphia, where he led the Philadelphia Athletics to the 1902 American League Championship. Pinkertons. (laughs) On July 1st, 1902, Rube became the second pitcher ever to strike out three consecutive batters with nine pitches. Every time I think of Pinkertons, I think of Red Dead Redemption, dude. Yeah, they're real, though. I know. (laughs) I know. (laughs) The funny part. Those damn Pinkertons. So, shortly after the 1902 season, reports indicated that Rube was going to play for Connie Mack's football team, but he never actually played with them. Mack later said, quote, There was a little fellow from Wanamaker's department store who asked for the job of quarterback. I didn't think he weighed more than 140 pounds or so. Well, the first practice he was at, Rube tackled him and broke the kid's leg. <laughs> It was the first inkling I had that players could be badly hurt in football. We got Rube out of there without delay. He was supposed to be pretty good, but we never found out. (laughs) But we never found out. (laughs) Rube returned to his family's home in Pennsylvania and played with local football clubs. He also played with various football teams later in his life and even had a brief stint as a goalkeeper in the St. Louis Soccer League. Hmm. All around sports guy. Just playing, playing sports, soccer, baseball. In his prime, football. In his prime, Rube was known as baseball's power pitcher with 302 strikeouts in the 1903 season. It's all those birds. 115 more than the second place Bill Donovan. So this guy threw 115 more pitches than the next best guy. He did great. Strikeouts, not pitches, sorry. So yeah, he did awesome. He said, blow me. So, One, two, three, four. Ac- according to baseball historian Lee Allen, Rube began the 1903 season sleeping in a fire station in Camden, New Jersey, and ended it tending a bar in Wheeling, West Virginia. In between these events, he won 22 games for the Philadelphia Athletics, toured the nation in a vaudeville play called <laughs> The Stain of Guilt, married and became separated from a woman named Mae Skinner, Saved a woman from drowning, accidentally shot his friend through the hand, and was bitten by a lion. Hell yeah. That last one, though. wonder how that went. 
His performance in The Stain of Guilt was notable because his co-stars realized he would not be able to remember his lines perfectly. So the director allowed him to improvise each performance. <laughs> that is a really bad mistake, I bet. The play was met with critical acclaim uh-uh. and was discussed in theater circles quite often. Rube used this newfound fame to negotiate a higher wage for his baseball career. <laughs> <laughs> You don't pay me enough. (laughs) Sorry, that's terrible. In 1905, Rube won a triple crown for pitching. He finished with a record of 27 wins and 10 losses, 287 strikeouts, and a 1.48 earned run average, which is unfucking believable. (laughs) Like, I know you don't know much about baseball, but like, a, a typical ERA at the end of a season is between three and four, and this guy was at one and a half. And it's fucking incredible. So. This guy was the real deal. It was also his fourth consecutive season to finish with 20 or more wins, which is also unfucking believable. <laughs> so. I wonder if they were in a row. So. It was around this time that Rube was sharing a room with, I hope I pronounced this guy's name right, O.C. Schreckengost. Sounds right. Uh, While the team was on the road, they were roommates. So, Schreckengost later refused to share a room with Rube until a contract was created, which would prevent Rube from eating crackers while in bed, which would keep Schreckengost up at night. (laughs) It was also around this time that Rube gained even more fame after saving the lives of people inside a department store when he picked up a boiling stove and carried it out of the building before it caught fire. (laughs) What a fucking maniac. (laughs) Rube's drinking problem was made worse by his marriage to Mary Skinner and a series of injuries in 1905 and 1906. Rube filed for divorce from May in late 1909, but May tried to sue Rube for bigamy because she did not believe that the divorce was real. But the divorce had been granted by the circuit court, so it was legal. (laughs) As legal as it gets. On April 8th, 1908, the Scranton Republican newspaper published an interview with Rube entitled, Unkissed Girl Sought by Rube Waddell. The interview was poorly received, and many people pointed to it as an example of Rube's progressing mental instability. Aw, man. Rube claimed he had lost track of how many women he had actually gotten married to, and his drinking got progressively worse to the point where it ruined his relationship with his teammates. Schreckengost, a one-time friend who would drink with Rube, began to frequently argue with him and would argue with Connie Mack, the manager, saying that Rube got special treatment. Oh, man. Well, I mean, kind of have to. Rube's increasingly erratic behavior included an incident in which he got into a fist fight on a cross-country train ride after making fun of a teammate's straw hat. (laughs) Numerous complaints from teammates forced Mack to send Rube to the St. Louis Browns for $5,000 in early 1908. $5,000. Despite his continued success. To make sure he stayed out of trouble during the offseason, Browns owner Robert (laughs) Hedges hired Rube as a hunter over the winters of 1908 and 1909. Further drinking and marital problems with his third wife, Madge McGuire, plagued Rube so much that he passed out in the middle of a game in 1909. This incident led to his release in 1910. He finished the season pitching for a team in Newark in the Eastern League, and after the 1910 season, he never played another major league game. By 1913, Rube's health had declined to such an extent that he no longer resembled the muscular, long-limbed hero of the previous decade. After catching pneumonia, he lost much of the vitality that had sustained him. He was diagnosed with tuberculosis in late 1913, and he moved to live with his sister in San Antonio, Texas. His health never recovered, and he died on April 1st, 1914, at the age of 37. His career stats include 193 total wins, 2,316 total strikeouts, 
a 2.16 earned run average, 50 shutout games, which means 50 games he pitched, the other team scored zero runs, and 261 complete games pitched, meaning he was the starting pitcher and pitched all nine innings. Jesus Christ. For 261 games. What an animal. Dude. That's the story of Rube Waddell. I enjoyed it. And now I'm kind of impressed. It had a little more charm than fucking Fritz Peterson and Mike Kekich. Yeah, they just had a lot of baggage, those guys did. They were really at each other's throats and kind of hated each other's guts. This guy was just an all-around fucking badass. Yeah, this guy was just a... He was... He was a little slow. A slow dude who knew how to throw a baseball and put out fires. Yeah. Yeah, which, you know, actually both <laughs> come in handy. You need somebody in situations that isn't really going to think too much. And uh, Look up a picture of him. You'll, uh, <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> you'll see why they called him Rube. R-U-B-E-W-A-D-D-E-L-L. You'll see why they called him old, uh, old Rube. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's... It, uh... We could be related. <laughs> Holy shit. Whatever, I guess. It's just the story of my life. Story of my life, I take her home. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? I was just going one direction. <clears throat> one direction. Just going. Is that the lyrics? Story of my life, I, I take, take her, her home. home. I'll tell you what, though. One thing about One Direction, uh, that Harry, Harry Styles, <coughs> his music's pretty good. Yeah. His solo stuff's really good, actually. I anyway. Bro- I broke my compass once. Your what? I broke my compass once. Yeah. But only point in one direction. God damn it. <laughs> 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 well... That was the story of Rube Waddell. It was really good. <laughs> I like baseball. Good old Rube. I'm trying to get into baseball. I'm trying to get into sports in general because I need something to, to get excited about. Yeah, because life is <laughs> depressing. Good old Rube Waddell. Good old Rube Waddell. Look out for that S10 whenever you go out here. Okay. It's all, it's for sale. Which way? This way? It's going that way up. You're okay. going to see it. You're going to be like, wow, that's for sale. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you know what happens. You better, dude. You better <laughs> let me know 